I am Terry Linkso, and I'm a master gardener in San Mateo County. Living soil structure is really important for the health of your plants, and it's something that you have control over, that you can actually grow the life in your soil. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But first of all, I wanted to tell you a little bit about why you want living soil. Living soil is built by the bacteria and the fungi and all the little uh, microarthropods and worms that live in your soil. And what they do is they create homes and they create passageways as they move about. And these passageways allow air and water to move into the soil and go deep down into the soil, which encourages deeper root growth, which also cleans the water as it runs through. Anything that's in that water is seen as food by these little organisms and they clean it all up. And that water moves down and eventually helps to recharge uh, the underground water table. So, more important, important for your plant, but also important for ecology, to have a living soil system. So I'd like to show you, a, talk a little bit about compost and humus and why these are valuable uh, to use when you want to grow a living soil. Both compost and humus are full of life, and that life, when you spread it out on the top of your soil, is going to move into your into your uh, into the soil and help open it up. Um, this is right here is a beautiful uh, dairy compost. It's completely finished. There's no heat left in it. It smells really good. That's a great sign when compost smells good. And you can use this as a, uh, on top of your soil to add life and a little bit of soluble nutrients. This is a humus. This has been broken down without heat. It's been broken down in a cool process over time, a long, long time actually. And this happens to be a, uh, a cow manure humus. It also smells great. It has a lot of life in it. Um, both are going to be very, very beneficial for your soil. You'll also find that there's many other types of compost available. There's green waste compost available that are much less expensive than a compost or a humus such as this. They are good, but what you might want to do is inoc use the green waste compost and then purchase a little bit of this specialty made compost and add it in. It will just add a diversity of life. The purpose of the mulch is to keep the compost from and humus from drying out and blowing away. And it's also uh, going to help retain moisture in your soil and it's also going to really help, uh, you'll have less of a problem with weed seed germination if you mulch. So mulch is very, very important. I've got a couple examples of mulch here. This happens to be an arbor mulch. It comes from tree trimmings. It's been double ground, so it's a little bit finer. I like a fine mulch because it breaks down faster. That means you have to reapply it a little more often, but the fact that it breaks down means that it's creating uh, humus. It's a source of food for the biology and it's helping to create that living soil. This is a recycled uh, mulch. It's uh, wood chips that um, are come from woody material. It can be trees, it can also be pallets. It's chipped up. It's also fine to use as a mulch. I'd like you to notice that mulch over time will start to clump together it clumps together because all the fungal hyphae is in there working on decomposing uh, these wood fibers. And uh, they clump the, humid, the mulch together as they do that. And oftentimes you will see all these little white threads running through. This is not a cause for concern. This is a good sign. This means you've got life going on and that's a good thing. In the summertime, when your mulch is all clumped together like this, if you go 
three or four inches thick with mulch, sometimes it will really clump together. And if you go and water that area, you'll find that the water sheds. It doesn't run through the mulch. So you need to water, if you need to water that area, you need to apply water very, very slowly. But more than likely, if you dig down through this, you'll find that the soil underneath is still quite moist. When the winter rains come, because they happen generally over a long period of time, they are able to penetrate through this thick layer of, of mulch. Okay, so now I'd like to demonstrate how you're going to apply the compost and the mulch. And in this case, we're applying it around an apple tree. This is very beneficial process uh, to do at least annually, preferably in the fall, maybe again in the spring, definitely for your fruit trees and for your roses, um, and other plants as well. Um, I'm just going to be a, today just talking about um, fruit trees. So what you want to do is you'd like to, uh, to compost and mulch an area that goes beyond the drip line of the tree. In this case, since we're in an urban garden that's very um, active, you're limited by the amount of space that you can uh, go. So you just go as far as, as far as you can. I've moved away the fresh mulch that uh, was recently put on top just so to expose a little bit of the older decomposing uh, mulch that's been put down over the years. And um, this will allow the compost that we're going to put down to have more contact uh, with um, decomposing material. What I like to do is first of all apply a little bit of water and just wet the top of the soil. The microbes like water, they need water, so that's why uh, fall is a great time to do it, maybe right after the first rainstorm or right before a rainstorm, but you do want to wet the soil first. So now we've got the soil slightly moist, probably hasn't penetrated that far, it wasn't a great deal of water, but there's some moisture there. Now we're ready to apply the compost, and we'll want to make sure that in these areas where the moisture hasn't penetrated through the decomposing mulch there, we want to make sure to allow enough time for that moisture, for that water to move through. But over here, the water has moved through, so I'll demonstrate right here. You only need a small amount of compost, maybe a quarter to three-eighths of an inch spread over the area, especially if it's a really nice, well-made compost. It's full of life and some soluble nutrients. You don't need a lot. And remember, around your fruit trees and roses, you're going to be applying this every year, hopefully in the fall. Then on top of that, I'm going to put the mulch. You want to be more generous with the mulch. You want to go, you want to go two inches if you can and up to three inches deep with the mulch because that's going to provide good cover. You don't want to see any of the compost underneath and that mulch is going to prevent the sun from sucking all the moisture out of that compost. You start your compost six to eight inches back and then slowly build up your mulch until you come to about two to three inches of mulch with a nice quarter inch or three-eighths of an inch layer of compost below that. Do this every fall and I think you'll be surprised at what you see happen to your soil. You'll see that your soil will start to open up. You'll see that when you irrigate in the summer months the water tends to run through and be held in the soil and you won't have to irrigate as much and your plant is going to be happier and healthier and much more disease resistant. So this is my quick tip for an easy way to build living soil structure in your garden.